Hey everybody, this is Franco. It's a Friday night, and I'm hanging out here with uh, my little buddy Tucker, and checking out some uh, new goodies that I got here from a co-worker who's building a CNC router. So what we have is the Longs Motor HBS57 Hybrid Step Servo Drive, and it is attached to the corresponding uh, closed loop stepper motor. I'll let you look at the part number right there. You can see what it is. But you've probably uh, shopped for these things on eBay, or maybe you're in the middle of shopping for these on eBay and you want to know a little bit more about them. So this is an interesting package. It's a Long's motor. They will sell you four of these uh, for $432 with free shipping, right? So for $432, you get four stepper motors, two power supplies, four drivers, a little breakout board. So basically, uh, you get enough uh, drives and motors and power supplies to build a, a small router, uh, kind of like the, the WorkBee CNC router that uh, I did in a few other videos. These, these motors are a perfect size for a project like that. And as you can see, these, this is a 2.2 newton meter motor. Most of the information about these is on their eBay listing. They actually did a pretty nice job of uh, telling you all about them, right? So 2.2 newton meters, 8 millimeter shaft. They give you a 350 watt, uh, well they give you two 350 watt 36 volt power supplies, which uh, makes sense. It looks like the driver itself can run off of anything between 24 and 60. Right now, for demonstration purposes, I have it hooked up to a 48 volt power supply, but um, yeah, if you order the kit, you're going to get 36 volt power supplies, and that's probably the best choice for something like this. Their YouTube listing, or their uh, eBay listing is pretty comprehensive. They give you the drawings, they tell you a whole lot about them. They give you a nice uh, uh, table here with all of the uh, color codes for the connections. And I followed that, hooked up the uh, encoder and the motor leads just uh, the way that the, the eBay listing described it. Didn't have any problems. What else do they give you? They show you the table. So this, this driver, unlike a lot of the other closed loop drivers that I've used, this one uses dip switches on the side to uh, set the pulses per rev. And that's kind of nice. A lot of these drives, these closed loop drives, uh, they require that you make those changes using the software, which we'll talk about in a second. But this one's kind of cool. It lets you change the pulses per rev using dip switches on the side of the drive. So that's kind of cool. Uh, makes it a little simpler if you don't if you don't want to get the uh, you don't want to get the software thing going and all that, but I'm, I'm going to show you the software anyway. Tucker will let me do it. Uh, they give you some further diagrams. They talk about the, the programming interface, but pretty much, you know, the main thing I would say in the eBay listing, at least in my opinion, the uh, primary, primarily useful information is this table up here where they explain to you how to hook up the encoder and what the color codes are for the cables. So, all right, I guess the uh, next thing here, we'll just, we'll uh, power this thing up so you can see what happens. Plug in the power supply, and there we go. So, the drive has power, and just as you would expect, it comes to life, it's locked, it's holding position, everything looks good. So, what do you do next? Well, this is what I'm going to do. I did a quick Google search. I'll put links in here to everything. Found the Longs Motor website. They have uh, wiring diagrams on here. And I believe, scroll down here, uh, they have the HBS 57. So you can download that and you can view the wiring diagram. I believe it's the one that they show in the eBay listing. It makes it a little bit clearer. Up top, they have the closed loop debugging software. So that's what we're going to use to talk to the drive. 
But the problem is these cables, which, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a link to where you can buy these cables. I bought mine from Automation Technologies, but this programming cable is a, a pretty standard thing. These cables are serial connection. So before you can talk to your computer, you need a, a serial, a USB to serial adapter, which I like this DTAC one. That's the one I use. It's $15. It's cheap. It's plug and play. Works great. So once you download the software, uh, it's, it's a, just a simple executable. It doesn't even really install. So you just launch it. And of course, you're going to get the warning. So I want to run it anyway. Uh, you go here and you just, you know, I want to speak English. And here you have it. This is the, uh, the little the little interface that pops up. So what you do, uh, assuming that your your USB to serial adapter is connected, you're plugged into your drive. Your drive's all powered up. You come over here and you click search. It's on COM three. Connecting at 57.6. You flip this switch right here, and it, you can see everything will start to flash. What it does is it connects to the drive, and it looks like it reaches out to the drive and uh, uploads all the settings that are inside the drive. If you want to uh, force that again, you can click this button, upload to software, and uh, it, it, like I said, it, it talks to the drive, it brings all the settings into the drive. If you make changes to these settings, you can click download to drive driver. Now down here you have a, a test feature. And what you do is, uh, th these are the settings that came out of the drive. So I, you know, I, I upload it to software. Th these are the settings that were in the drive. So if I want to turn this drive on and make it start to do something, make it do a test move, all I got to do is flip this little switch. And off we go. The drive is it's moving. So that's kind of nice. You can do a bench test and you can see if your motors are working. If you want to stop it, you flip the switch. If you want to change the settings, you uh, have to type something else in. Let's see, I'll just change. I'll change the interval setting, make it move back and forth a little quicker. Uh, you download to drive, then you turn the, the test pattern back on. So that is pretty straightforward stuff. So other than doing the test pattern, the software is useful for changing um, well, you can change all kinds of settings. All these parameters over here, they, these kind of, you know, they affect the kinematics of the drive. I'll be honest with you, I don't usually mess with that stuff. I usually just go with the defaults. Usually works good for me. But something that you may need to adjust are, uh, well, you may need to adjust the enable level and the alarm level. So what, what is this? Well, we'll talk about the enable level first of all. Right now, the enable level is set to zero. So that means when, you know, obviously uh, there, there's no power, there's no signal going to enable. The drive will enable uh, when it sees, uh, you know, zero volts or whatever. Going, you know, basically there's, the, the, the signal is off going to enable, the drive will enable. If I switch enable level to one and download to the drive, now what you see happening is the alarm light comes on and the motor is freewheeling. Because what we're saying, what we just told the drive is that it, you need an input to enable the drive. So if there is no, no signal coming to the enable uh, ENA plus, ENA minus, if there's no signal there, the drive will not enable. And depending on how you're wiring up your machine, that, that's probably how, 
how you want to, to set it up, right? So if your CNC control board uh, stops working correctly or loses power, you'll disable your drives. But for, for the purposes of bench testing, I'm going to put that back to uh, zero. And download, and now the drive's happy again. Something else that you may need to play with is the alarm level. And what does that do? Well, you know, uh, same thing. It, it basically changes the state of the alarm. And uh, in order to demonstrate that, what I've done is I've just I've wired up a very simple little circuit here. I just took a nine volt battery, and I'm I'm basically just running nine volts through the alarm plus and minus uh, connections, and I have it hooked up to my multimeter. So what that's saying right now is in the normal state, it's it's not alarming out. It lets the voltage pass through those two connections, and this is typically how you'll want to wire up your alarm circuit. So what you do is you you take all your drives, you know, your, your stepper drives, your spindle drives, whatever you have, uh, you wire them all up in series, kind of like a big daisy chain. And if any one of those drives in that chain breaks the chain, then that triggers an alarm on your CNC control board. So right now, the drive is in a normal state. It has It's not alarmed out. And it's allowing the, the 9 volts to pass through that uh, circuit. So what I'm going to do, um, and I actually, I've adjusted the position error uh, parameter. It's normally, uh, the default value is 400. I put it down to 4. What I'm going to do is take my wrench. This is kind of hard to do with one hand now that I'm, I'm doing it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna manually torque this this uh, motor and make it alarm out. So let me see if I can. Like I said, not easy to do with one hand, but I will try. There we go. I just torqued it, and now it's an alarm state. And as you can see, it it basically broke the connection. So if this, if this drive was wired up in that daisy chain with all your other drives and something happened that made it fall out, this drive would break the, uh, break the, the circuit and trigger an e-stop or whatever other alarm state your CNC would, would do in that case. So let me, um, I'm just going to kill the power to the drive. And then I'm going to plug it back in. It's back online. And it's happy. And now you can see it's letting the 9 volts uh, pass through it again. So hopefully that, what I explained there, makes sense. Let me see. What else is uh, useful? Oh, something that, that I noticed. Th these changes to these uh, settings... You know, you can download them to the drive, but I, I suggest that you power cycle the drive after you download. Uh, that way you can be guaranteed that these changes will take effect. Other, otherwise, you may, you may get some confusing uh, results when you do it. So when you make these changes, download to the drive, power cycle the drive, and then you'll be good to go. Uh, other than that, let's see, I'm just going to put this back to 400. And all that's doing is what it's saying is it's going to allow the it's going to allow the shaft to move, or it's going to allow more displacement on the shaft before it triggers an alarm. And here again, this is really hard for me to do, but you can see I'm I'm twisting this thing. Let's see here. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. I'll try. <laughs> Uh, here we go. So you can you can see I'm uh, I'm twisting this quite a bit before you know what it, it's it's quite a bit of displacement. That drive is not alarming out. So depending on your application, 
you can you can adjust that setting. 400 is where it started at. That's probably what I would leave it at. Well, okay, I'll put links to all this stuff in the video. Hopefully that was helpful. Maybe you know a little bit more about this. This driver, I would say, um, I would say these motors are a great choice for like a, a four-axis uh, CNC router. You know, something with a traveling uh, column, you know, double Y-axis like the Work B CNC or a machine like that. Uh, I use similar size motors on my small uh, Sureline CNC lathe. I don't think these motors would be big enough for like a PM25 or a, a Grizzly G074. I, I don't think I would use these motors on a machine of that size. But definitely, you know, any machine that's smaller than that, you know, a mini lathe, a mini mill, um, you know, 3D printers for sure. These things would be plenty big enough for a 3D printer. But w when I see these, especially when they come bundled in a four, a four motor package, I think this is like perfect for a CNC router like the Workbee. And you can't beat the price. You know, less than $500, you get uh, four closed loop steppers drivers with power supply, breakout boards, you can't beat it. Well, all right, guess this video is long enough. Tucker, you're cool. <laughs> He's waiting for dinner. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. Have a good day.